Hi, my name is John, and welcome to another edition of Statistics Quest. The baseball season, as many of you know, may not end up starting on time. Uh, we hope it does start at some point during the year. And it's, of course, you know, if you're in the Northeast like, like we are, uh, you got some snow and it's very cold. And, but in the meantime, February, we can talk about baseball. So whether it goes on or not, uh, we will still talk about baseball. And today I want to talk to you about Nolan Ryan and the likelihood of his seven no-hitters. So we're going to ask the probability of Ryan getting seven no-hitters. And now it's very important when you ask a question, a probability question, what your assumptions are. So for example, we may ask the question for the, under the assumption of anybody pitching seven no-hitters. Well, that's really a different question than Ryan pitching seven no-hitters based on his own statistics. But so we're going to base this on his statistics, which would make sense because um, obviously people know that it's rare for anybody to get seven no-hitters, but how rare was it for Ryan to get seven no-hitters based on him being Nolan Ryan? All right, so a few key metrics. One is the batters that he faced. Uh, the batters that he faced, I believe I am missing a digit here, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, that should be 22,000, I think 750 something, but that's okay. We'll ignore that for now because we'll, we'll uh, resolve that here in a second. Um, the hits allowed were 39.23. His walks plus hits by pitch are 30.31. That leaves as outs 15.621. All right. There are a couple caveats that are involved in this. I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I at least want to pay lip service to it. The fact that there are double plays enter into it, errors enter into things, etc. There are other maybe obscurities, um, but, but basically what it comes down to is, here we look at the bottom, the, we want to look at the percentage of the hits that he gives up. So for the time being, we're going to assume when a batter comes to the plate, one of two things can happen. Either it's a hit, of which we said he allowed 39.23, or it's an out, and what we're going to do since, um, uh, of course, we're ignoring walks here in the second, so we're going to assume either, and we're also going to assume errors and other obscurities, it's either going to be a hit or an out, as we said, 39.23 hits, and divided by 39.23 plus the number of outs, which is 15.621, which we said earlier, that's 19.544, about a 20% chance of any batter getting a hit. Well, that leaves an 80% chance of getting an out. Okay, so we come over here and we ask, well, what's the chance of him getting a no-hitter in any given game? With the assumption that a batter is going to come to the plate and either get a hit or an out, that's simple, and the chance of getting an out is 80%, which is 0.8, 27 straight batters getting an out would be 0.8 to the 27 power. It's about equal to 0 0.0024, which is equal to 0.24%. That's a little less, actually, than 1 in 400. He started 807 games, so if he should get a no-hitter once every 400 times or so, we would, we would expect him to get about two no-hitters. Okay, so he got seven no-hitters. So we're going to... Let's first ask the question, what's the probability of getting exactly seven no-hitters, all right? Well, uh, many of you probably have learned Python. That's kind of become the big computer language in the last five or ten years or so, but just a couple easy lines that uh, uh, you can even try this yourself and play around with numbers if you like, if you happen to have Python uh, available. So it's this line, which I'm not... Uh, you know, I'm gonna, going to read it, but you can see it here. And then the second line actually says binom, that's B-I-N-O-M, that's for binomial, dot P-M-F, which stands for probability mass function, K equals 7, N equals 807, P equals 0.024. So K equals 7. Uh, when you think in terms of binomial, you think of successes and failures. We can think of that as seven successes. N equals 807, that's the total number of attempts, we can call it, in this, came, in this case, 
game started. Probability of a success, in this case a no-hitter is 0.0024, so the probability of getting exactly seven no-hitters is 0 0.0029. I'm going to get a quick uh, sip of coffee here and take a break, just a second. Okay, now, however, we're not going to stop there because we won't, and this is where we need to be careful with questions. When we ask the question, what's the probability of Ryan getting seven no hitters? We're really asking, even though nobody ever says it, we're really asking, what's the probability of getting seven or more no hitters? And, and this is an important, an important, um, Thing to bring up. So, for example, just, just as a real quick uh, segue over, let's say you're flipping coins with a friend, and uh, you're going to flip a thousand times. He wins if it's a tail, you win if it's a head, and 505 tails come up, right? So he won a few more times than you did, and you, and you accuse your friend of cheating. You say, well, wait a second. How'd you get 505 wins? And you find the probability of exactly 505 tails. That actually might be fairly small. Maybe it's 2%. I'm not sure. Um, and you say, well, geez, there's just a 2% chance that you got 505 tails. Well, that's misleading because you're really asking, what's the probability that you get 505 or more tails? That's a different question. Maybe that's 30%, okay? So, again, it, it, it's very important to... Uh, to to really ask the question that is inherent in the likelihood that you are seeking, okay? And so, we're going to ask, what's the probability of getting seven or more? That's a little bit more than the probability of getting seven, right? Here's the probability of getting exactly seven. The probability of getting seven or more is going to be a little bit more than that. But the way we're going to go about it is by the use of a complement. There's something in statistics, in particular with the binomial function and other distributions, called CDF, or cumulative distribution function. And in the word cumulative, you have the word accumulate. And so we can look at this as, instead of finding the probability of seven or more, we're going to find the probability of six or less. So unlike this first example, where we had exactly seven with the PMF function, CDF finds the probability of that many or less, okay? Because you're accumulating. So with this six, you think of, well, zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six. So in other words, you're accumulating the probabilities from zero through six is the way you look at it. Okay, so this formula finds the probability of six or fewer no-hitters. What is that probability? It's 0.996. But we didn't want the probability of six or fewer. We wanted the probability of seven or more. Well, seven or more is the complement of six or fewer. Why is it the complement of six or fewer? Well, the complement of something is all other possibilities. So let's think about this. If you're not getting six or fewer no-hitters, what must be happening? You must be getting seven or more. So, again, the probability of six or fewer is 0.996. What's the probability of seven or more? It's one minus 0.996. That's 0.004. That is the probability, given our assumptions, that Nolan Ryan would have had seven or more no-hitters in his career. That's about one in 250 so, again, we're putting a number onto this rarity. It is quite rare, uh, even for Nolan Ryan. <clears throat> Excuse me, 0 .004. Before I finish, I want to mention two other things about Ryan. One of them, you probably, and I'm going to make, make these my next two, actually, discussions, probably in the next week or so. One is the fact that I believe, if I have the numbers correct, he had seven no-hitters, he also had 12 one-hitters, and he had... 18 two-hitters. We could look at the probability of that happening, very similar numbers. The other thing that's very obscure that I want to mention, at age 41 or older, he took four no-hitters into the eighth inning. He ended up getting one of them, completing one of them at age 44, but at age 41 
or later. He took four no-hitters into the eighth inning, not in the same year. I think that's extremely impressive. I haven't done the numbers yet for either of those other two things. I'm interested to see how they compare to that point oh oh four. Um, but anyway, that is something that I will have in the very near future. Okay, if you have any questions on anything I did, please feel free to ask. In the meantime, uh, I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed if you haven't. And, next, and we will see you next time on Statistics Quest.